So to start out with this example, we'll just take our default cube and I'll look at it in top view using numpad 7, SY, scale it in. And we will just shift A, add another cube and move this cube over to the left and set it up to be a difference. And you can see from the indicator label that it's non-destructive and we'll just play with this a bit. Sometimes I like to just insert cubes for old time's sake and just see how fast things are on the hop side compared to the box cutter side. And I'm pretty sure we have a way to duplicate booleans while keeping the operations live, but we'll just uh, do it the traditional way. And we'll duplicate this cutter, scale it a bit, select this one, cut it into the cutter itself. So basically the cutter has become the cut, id. And we'll just keep um, making modifications to create a shape. I'll have to go to the cutters collection and grab this one because I switch collections too fast. And to finally conclude, we'll select these two, set up a bowl, go here, and set up a bowl. And so while this looks fairly random, we'll uh, mirror it to the other side. It doesn't need to be new modifier, it could be modifier. Doesn't matter, we'll just mirror it. And then looking at it from the top, I'll just go into box cutter because making an ankle cut is just too easy with Ngon to just deny myself the pleasures of Incon. So after performing that cut, we'll mod scroll backwards in order to grab this cutter and just move it just a little bit in order to prevent any issues. So we have this shape and this shape is fairly boxy. And you'd think that, you know, it's just making like a sci-fi grade or something, you know. However, because of dice, we can approach this a little differently. So under mesh tools, we'll hit dice and I'll just move the mouse in order to change the axis. And if we do this cut, we are gonna be cutting on the unmodified, unaffected version, and we actually do not want that. So uh, if we look at our help, we see that S will smart apply. So smart apply is now part of dice, where if you press S, you can actually apply those pesky modifiers that would normally be getting in your way. And we can, you know, dice this on the Z, but I also would like to dice it on the X. And for something like this, I can tell you in advance that knife project is gonna be a little problematic. So if we press Q, we can change the algorithm to mesh intersect. And whenever we click to apply, everything goes off without a hitch. However, now we have applied all our modifiers and diced this mesh, something fierce. And because we've diced it something fierce, uh, new possibilities open up to us. So I will press Q and under add modifier, we will just add a lattice and with our lattice placed, it's already form-fitting around the shape. And we can press Q to bring up the lattice Q menu. And I want to actually adjust the amount of segments on the Z axis. So we'll go ahead and do that. And looking at it from the front, or actually the side, we'll just move our lattice segments into place. And we can see that this object is basically beef jerky at this point. But we can really twist this and deform it to get some really unique shapes very quickly. And this is one of the things I really wanted to um, emphasize on after the creation of dice. So we'll add a segment in the middle, just clicking on X and then moving the mouse. The modal for it is pretty arbitrary. It's just using the Blender uh, template modal system after I, we figured out how to use it, or at least I did. I, I was like, I want to use that thing everywhere. So nice and nimble. So we will Go ahead and just keep adjusting things. And now that we have everything the way we want, we can press Q and adjust the Z to give it even more rounding. And if we wanted to deal with the middle and have it be a little less angular, we can do that as well by just clicking on X and just moving the mouse a little bit. And now this is the shape that we have created. And so even with this shape, I do enjoy, um, you know, 
I don't even believe I need to pause the sorting of the lattice. Let's find out. And right now we're in custom. We want to press D and switch over to two box. As long as the indicator is red in the corner of the screen, that should be your way of knowing that I'm switching between box cutter and hard ops on the fly. And also if box cutter is in, is in a state, sometimes whenever the bulls get tough and your PC gets hanging, it's hard to tell if your operation is still active or if you're in the process of waiting for an apply. So there's a lot of reasons that it seemed like a pretty good idea at this time to let the logo be your shining light. So we're just getting in here, just cutting a few angles, just really having fun with the form here. And this is actually just the beginning. Of course, the next thing is if I were to want to say fill this area in, I could just bring something as simple as a cube, scale it, and we now have this encompassing the form. Of course, that's the old way of doing things. I need to retrain my brain to think in terms of things like two shape. So if we press Q and go to operations, we can actually use two shape. If you're part of the QD gang, you would press Q O T, which would just do Q operations and two shape. So that may explain some of the verbiage that you see inside of hard ops is uh, some things are being optimized for the QD gang because it is a much faster way to get around hops. Um, not so great for tutorials, but whenever I'm working personally, cannot resist. So with this piece in place, we will press control tilde and we will look at our hops helper under the workflow section. And by having seam increase checked, that means that I can grab this top face and bottom face and just mark it. Normally I would use sharpening, but I don't want to mark these other angles. And now when I press control one, two, three, I can now play with a subdivided version. Of course, I could have inserted a cylinder, but old habits. So we could press Q, go under add modifier and add a lattice again. And by just adding a few segments, we can begin making the same changes that we did to the form previous, just getting things to be a little bit more contoured, a little bit more form fitting, but Lattices is one of those things that I definitely recommend spending some time implementing into your workflow because it's one of those legacy parts of Blender that's so stable that it's never changed and it doesn't have to change. There's hardly any improvements needed aside from my dream of being able to sculpt them and grab their points with a grab brush as part of uh, modeling itself. But other than that, lattices are just great. So we'll add one more segment on the X. This will allow us to grab the Y and just pull it back. Also, I'm pretty sure there is or isn't a symmetry on the lattice system, but that's another one of those things that I always ponder about. Of course, we could reorder the mod stack to mirror it across itself, but in this case, the goal is to just attempt to get a nice form on the inside without having to do a whole lot of damage. And so now we have the interior created, I'll press control tilde again, and we can just hit smooth here. However, if that's too far for you, you can always expand the hops drop down, and there's an option for smooth that will just shade it smooth, and then we could just choose an auto smooth angle. In fact, if we wanted to be completely click efficient, we could just come in, click 45, and it will set smooth and auto smooth, and basically set us up for the next maneuver. So, with our shape kind of uh, built into place, we could press Alt-H and just bring back the lattice, maybe press 1 to get rid of cutters, and just think about how we want to keep constructing this area. Of course, this is just kind of a quick demonstration of showing lattice and dice at the same time, so we are close to the wrap point of this video. However, I just wanted to do something quick to just show reasons why you would want to use uh, lattice and dice in order to create really interesting organic shapes because um, you know, I always come out with these boxy shapes, but by no means should that be a constraint on your design style altogether. Of course, our goal is to free your design and allow you to make the shapes of your dreams. So just letting you know that, you know, sometimes to get the shape to deform the way you want, geo has to be added. And for that reason, die success. And without 
further ado, we'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.